right, well here we are. Uh, it's been 24 hours after glue up and I uh, apologize it did not take you along for the glue up there. It's just too challenging with uh, glue and clamps and space and all that. Didn't want to get any glue on the camera, but uh, you can probably get the idea basically gluing the two pieces, uh, the two scales to the tang. Um, uh, rough it up, uh, rough the sides up really good, both the tang and the scales, rough it up so it's a good adhesion. Also do uh, put some little uh, drill holes in there, little dimples into the uh, into the, the scales to help the glue have a little bit more space to, to ooze into, I guess. And so um, the pins that I chose are these ones right here. These are just black uh, micarta pins, or I, I believe they're G10. They're G10 or micarta. I can't remember at the moment now. I think they're G10. We'll, we'll find out after I sand them. But uh, two of those, uh, just uh, eighth inch, then a quarter inch lanyard tube just went with a copper lanyard tube there so anyway we are about ready to begin shaping shaping the handle and uh, should uh, be a fun process always neat to see after everything gets done just to see how the knife looks and how the knife will look and uh, especially this cross cut micarta so hope you'll stick along I'll, I'll take you along and show you how I shape a knife handle Okay, well here we are, Stay at this stage of the uh, shaping process, and uh, right now looking pretty good. Just going to take it now uh, to my 10-inch uh, wheel, and uh, can really get a good, uh, good rounded edge there, and also get this radius here, inside curve, with the 10-inch wheel, and then I'll put on my small wheel and get, uh, get that one there, and just get all the the profile of the handle all done and uh, then we'll begin uh, to slowly taper excuse me, we'll taper the edges taper the a little bit that way so the, the front is thinner back is a little heavier a little bulkier um, this is not very thick material as it is it's just a quarter inch plus another oh, about sixteenth or less with the with the liners the the black as you can see the the black and uh, if we can get a better light here so you can see Oh, that's all washed out. There you go. You can see the black, the black and blue liners there. Um, once that is uh, done, it'll look it'll look really sharp if it's all all sanded together. But anyway, I'm gonna get the uh, other wheel on and uh, shape these uh, other radiuses. Okay, well, moving right along on the handle shaping, and uh, pretty happy so far with the result. As you can see here, got uh, most of the most of the rough shaping done, and uh, turning out turning out pretty good. I'm gonna thin it out just a bit more, but uh, turning turning out really good. Fits really good. This is just gonna be a personal knife. This is a test knife. I haven't. Uh, had much use of this style of blade, my Eider, and so I wanted to uh, make my own and or test it out. Hopefully, get. Um, I'm going to be taking my daughter caribou hunting here, 
and hopefully she can get a caribou, her first caribou, and then uh, I will uh, we'll, we'll use this knife. So anyway, coming right along, I'm just going to thin thin it out just a bit more. Uh, still need to put the small wheel attachment on and get that radius there, but uh, no no real rush. I can get most of it shaped and then just uh, get that in there like that. I'm trying to get it symmetrical, most uh, symmetrical as possible, and uh, just get a good get a good shape on it. So, uh, yeah, going right now to my slack platen or my uh, my slack platen, my my slack belt. <laughs> Go to my slack belt, <clears throat> and we'll uh, shape shape just a little bit more, and also went up to a little finer grit belt. Um, <clears throat> I'm at a uh, I believe it's a hundred or so, but it's an old belt, so uh, I'm not sure the exact grit on that. But a little finer than what I used before to uh, refine some of that. Then I'll uh, I'll show you the result after that in just a minute. Okie dokie, well, here we are. We got the handle pretty much all rough shaped and uh, just got to just kind of give you a little little show here. Looks uh, pretty, pretty good. Very, very happy with it. And I got it, uh, got it thinned down just a bit. Thinned down there, fits real nice. Very nice in the hand, good, uh, good grip and uh, gonna, be, gonna be nice. Now I'm just gonna take it uh, put it on the vise over there and uh, do some hand sanding. I don't think I'm going to have to do a lot of hand sanding, thankfully. I've um, got uh, just that uh, the slack belt really helped quite a bit, so I'm able to get most of the most of it out, and this stuff just really smooths up just slick as a whistle. Like, I mean, it's just it's cool stuff. So anyway, just going to take it, uh, put it in the vise there, and uh, hand sand it, and we should be finishing this blade here pretty soon. So, man, looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm just going to start with uh, 320 here. Um, I got it really good off the grinder. The only part I might need to go a little of a higher grit or lower grit, whatever, is right here. There's a little bit of a divot, but I'm hoping I can just get it out with this uh, 320. And so just going to, to hand sand this and then going to um, just jump, jump right to 600 and uh, go straight to 600 there and see how that works out if I have to change it up a little bit I can but right now I'm just gonna try this right here okay so yeah that uh, those little divots were taking a little bit too much with the 320 so I just jumped up to some <clears throat> uh, 120 here real quick just to smooth out those divots pretty much uh, pretty much got them got them out and uh, do the shape in there like that. One thing I might do too is just take a with this little uh, coarser grit just to smooth out that copper there and I get the scratches going in the same direction. I'm not too worried about the G10 pins though they will uh, they're gonna just clean up pretty nice. So I'm I'm also going to put a just a little bit of a you'll see in a minute here, a little bit of a divot right here with the grinder just as a final touch with a high grit belt just to kind of have a have a nice little. I love, really like the way it feels with the thumb like that. So anyway, I'm gonna keep on going here, finishing up this side. Go to my other side. Okay, now just a little a couple passes with the 600. Just make it just a bit better. 
just a bit smoother. This is this is pretty good quality Gator wet dry sandpaper, so works pretty good on metal. Works pretty good on this micarta, and uh, so yeah. Fresh fresh side. All right, well here is the finished knife. And uh, really, really turned out really good out here on the land. And as I said, I was really trying to get it finished because I wanted to uh, take it out hunting to test it out. Uh, my daughter, I was gonna take my daughter out caribou hunting. And uh, lo and behold, the day after I finished this, she gets a caribou. She shot a caribou just now. And so we're gonna use this knife. You're gonna see this knife, my Eider. It's my Eider model. You can see it in action, cutting up caribou, and uh, the knife that uh, you've been following along in our, in our uh, just as I build it. And so anyway, it's gonna be awesome. All right. Okay, here's the group of caribou we found. The herd of caribou, they all are shedding quite a bit, so they're all mottled and kind of uh, ugly looking, but uh, we're not looking for a big caribou. We're not looking for uh, antlers or anything. We're hunting for meat. So anyway, we're grateful God showed us this herd and my daughter was able to get one. Okay, well here she is. We've got a nice mature female, no calf. And uh, awesome, good job Haley, proud of you. Very, very proud of you, so good job. Bum. 